Have you been putting too much state into your global store that can be managed locally? So this video is going to show you how to move some of that state out of your global store into an NGRX component store using the NGRX Books app as an example. So here we're going to start out with the login page component that we are migrating from the NGRX store to component store. So you see we have a couple of selectors here for the pending state and the error state. And we're dispatching a login action that has the credentials that the user submitted on the page. Looking at the auth reducer, we see that we also have some API actions here for login success and logout. We're only going to focus on the login success from this reducer. Next, we can look at the login page reducer, which has the state for the error and the pending status in the initial state in our reducer that's wired up to the global store and our handlers for each one of those actions for login, login success, and login failure. And we have the two selectors here that are getting those values that we're using in the login page component. Next we'll take a look at the auth effects to where we're handling these actions to log in the user and redirect them to the home page if they log in successfully. So if we look here, we have the login action and that maps into the auth service request. And then we return the login success or login failure action uh, based on the results. And we have a login success uh, redirect that happens if they log in successfully. So next we wanna go and create a new component store for the login page. So I'm gonna go into the containers folder, create login page.store.ts. And this is where we'll create the class for our component store. First, I want to import the component store class from NGRX component store. Next, I want to import the injectable uh, decorator from Angular Core. Next, I'll define an interface to manage the type for the store. So in order to do that, I'm going to export an interface named login page state. I'm going to go into the login page reducer and copy the properties out of the state and copy them into the login page state interface. Next, I will copy the initial state from the reducer and paste it into the file and update the interface being used to login page state. Next, I'll use the injectable decorator and export class for a login page store that extends the component store and uses the login page state interface. Next, I want to add the constructor, and this is going to use the super method to set the initial state. Going back to the login page reducer. We have the selectors that we need to provide in our login page store for get error and get pending. So in the login page store, I'm going to define the two properties for error. And this will select the state that error property. And I'm going to define the pending property, which selects the state pending property. Next, I want to handle the effects that are going to be that were being used in the auth effects and bring those into the component store. So going back to the auth effects, we have our login effect and our login success. So to bring these into the component store, I'm going to use the effect function that comes provided with the component store. So I'm going to define a property called login 
and this is going to use the effect method. And what this is going to do is take the credentials that were passed in. This will be an observable of credentials. And this will return the credentials as an observable. And we want to use the pipe operator or pipe method on the observable uh, to transform that data. So next I'm going to import the observable type from RxJS. And next I'm going to paste in the credentials. Now that the effect is set up, I'm going to copy the exhaust map and the logic that's in the auth effects and paste it into the pipe for the credentials. Now I'm going to update the imports and I'm going to import the auth service that was being used in auth effects. I still have my actions that I previously defined here, but we'll update this effect to use this to manage these side effects here in the in this observable stream. So for the map, I'm going to change this to use a tap response instead. And a tap response will give me two callback functions, one for if the API request succeeds and then a callback for handling the error condition. So I'm going to update the tap the arguments in the tap response and remove the catch error as it is used internally to tap response. Now I want to update the state from when the user succeeds or if they fail to log in successfully. So to update the state for when success happens or an error happens, I'm going to use the set state method that's provided with the component store. So I don't need this action anymore. And what I'm going to do is call the set state method and set the error equal to null and pending equal to false. So this handles the login success as far as the reducer goes. And if I have an error, remove this action. Say this error is going to be a string and use set state again to set the error and the pending to false. Going back to the auth effects, we also have the login success action that was being used previously after the user logged in to redirect them to the home page. So in our story, we also want to handle this behavior. So we'll still need to dispatch an action from within our component store that communicates with the global store. So in order to do that, I'm going to use the inject the store service so I'm going to define a property in this class for store. And I want to use the auth API actions login success. So in order to do that, I'm going to use the store and say this.store.dispatch. I'm going to use the auth API actions dot login. success action and pass the user that was provided. I also want to bring in the router to navigate back to the home page. So next I will import or define a router property and bring in the Angular router. And then I will use the router to navigate back to the home page. Lastly, I want to set the pending flag to true whenever the login method is called. So I'll do that before we return the observable in the login effect.
So in the login effect, I'll add a new line and use the set state method again to set pending to true and error to null. So if there was a previous error, this will reset the flags in the state once the form is submitted. Now I have everything I need in the login page store to use in the login page component. Going back to the login page component, I'll need to add the login page store to the provider so that it's local to this component. So to do that, I'll set the providers and add the login page store to the providers array. Next, I will inject the login page store into the login page component so that I can use this local store instead of the global store. So I will update the pending property to use the local store. And I will update the error property to use the same store, local login page store. And in the on submit method, I will use the login page store to log in with the credentials. And I'll remove the global store from this component. And now all the state for the login page is handled within this component. When the component is destroyed, the login page store will be destroyed also. But each time I visit this page, it will be recreated so I can manage the state locally. Now that my login page global state is no longer being used, I can go and delete those files from the application here. And now I want to clean up the login page import and remove the interface from the global state, remove the reducer from the map of reducers, and remove the selectors that I've exported globally. The auth reducer still has the login success action that we were that was being dispatched before. Going into the auth effects, I can now remove the login success effect and the login effect. Lastly, I can go into the actions file and remove the login page actions from being exported and delete the login page actions. If I have any imports here, I also need to clean those up. So in the login page component, you can do some cleanup there. And in the auth effects class, I will remove those imports. Make sure I save all my changes. And now we have a running application that's using the component store for local state management for the login page.